So growth, uh, gross hematuria may be due to endogenous sources um, such as bilirubin, myoglobin, porphyrins, and for the food ingested, beet, such as beets both. And for the drugs, um, in a rotation. This distinction can be made easily by urinalysis with microscopy, and it is required to confirm for the diagnosis of hematuria. Gross hematuria must be distinguished from vaginal bleeding in women. It is of which it is. It can be achieved by obtaining a careful menstrual history, collecting the specimen when the, when the patient is not having menstrual or gynecological bleeding, or if necessary, obtaining a catheterized specimen. Gross hematuria may also be detected by the presence of blood spotting on the undergarments of incontinent patients. After ruling out vaginal bleeding and mimics of Hematuria, a rheologic source, must be suspected. For the microscopic hematuria, um, a laboratory diagnosis defined as the presence of red blood cells on microscopic examination of the urine and are not evident on visual inspection of the urine. It is higher on predominance of males, older patients, and smokers. Criteria for diagnosis of microscopic hematuria according to American Neurologic Association guideline. It is three or more RBCs or per high power field, concluding that the higher thresholds would need to miss opportunities to diagnose treatable urologic conditions. A single positive urinalysis is sufficient to prompt evaluation. For the requirement for microscopic evaluation, the results of urine dipstick test must be confirmed on urinalysis with microscopy and alone are considered insufficient to prompt an evaluation. Specimens collected Im immediately after prolonged recumbency, first void in the morning or after vigorous physical or sexual activity may be falsely positive for hematuria. Dilute urine may result in false negative microscopic examination as a result of RBC lysis. For the causes of microhematuria, in most studies, one third to two thirds of patients evaluated have been found to have a demonstrable cause, including calculus, benign prostatic enlargement, urethral suture, and various other conditions. Notably, the evaluation of the patients with microscopic hematuria has been found to yield a diagnosis of malignancy in 0.68% to 4.3% of cases, depending on the characteristics of the population evaluated. The threshold for evaluation and the completeness of the evaluation. The likelihood of identifying malignancy has been found to be a greater to be greater among patients with higher levels of microscopic hematuria, greater than to 25 RBCs per high power field and or risk or risk factors for malignancy. For the common risk factors for urinary tract malignancy in patients with <clears throat> microscopic hematuria, 
male gender, an uh, age of older than 35 years old, past or current smoking history, occupational or other exposure to chemicals or dyes, analgetic, analgesic abuse, history of grossimatoria, urologic disorder, irritative voiding symptoms, pelvic irradiation, chronic urinary exposure to non-carcinogenic agents or chemotherapy such as alkylating agents, and history of chronic indwelling foreign body. Selecting patients for evaluation, <coughs> Um, the presence of infection be, must be confirmed with a urine culture and urinalysis and should be repeated after treatment of UTI to document resolution of the hematuria. If hematuria persists, further evaluation is warranted. And if patients who develop hematuria, mic microscopic or gross, for taking anticoagulation or antiplatelet medications such as warfarin and oxaparin, heparin, aspirin, clopidogrel, and NSAIDs undergo, should undergo a complete evaluation in the same manner as the patients not taking as such medications. For the neoplasm, examples are bladder, cancer, the common clinical presentation and risk factors are the are that I mentioned earlier. This is a, guide, a guideline algorithm for evaluation of adult patients with asymptomatic microhematuria. For first, we have we should have a history and physical assessment for the potential <clears throat> microscopic hematuria causes. Physical examination should focus on the genitourinary system, such as flank tenderness, masses in the flank, abdomen, suprapubic, suprapubic area, or urethra, and enlarged nodular, tender, or stockton prostate. Physical examination also may identify signs of coagulopathy, bruising, infection, or renal disease, such as hypertension and edema. If urethral stricture or benign prostatic hyperplasia is suspected, a urine flow chart and post void residual measurement may be helpful as well. Laboratory testing includes urinalysis, if not performed previously, um, to confirm the presence of hematuria and check for dysmorphic red cells, cell casts or proteinuria. Urine culture if the urinalysis or clinical presentations such suggest infection. And prostatic specific antigen in appropriate setting. If a benign cause of hematuria is discovered during the initial and physical examination, the, the cause should be verified and treated. Urine should be retested to ensure and that the hematuria has resolved in the absence of presumed benign cause. Moreover, if a medical renal cause of hematuria is suspected based on the presence of renal insufficiency, hypertension or abnormalities or neurinalysis, nephrology evaluation is recommended, but the patient should still undergo urologic evaluation. 
the cystoscope uh, <clears throat> is a key component of the hematuria evaluation because it is the most reliable way to evaluate the bladder from, for the presence of bladder cancer and provides the opportunity to evaluate the urethra. AUA guidelines indicate the cystoscopy should be performed in all adults who meet the criteria of hemodilation. These are 35 years of age or older and have a, have, have a higher risk factors for malignancy. Bladder cancer is rare and um, with less than one per 100,000 among persons 35 years or younger. Cystoscopy may be omitted in persons younger than 35 years without risk factors or clinical suspicion for bladder cancer or urethral pathology. For the upper, upper truck, truck imaging in the diagnostic evaluation of hematuria, multiphasic computed tomography urogram may be used. It is an imaging study recommended by the AUA guidelines for the evaluation of asymptomatic microscopic hematuria. It offers complete imaging of the urinary tract and has the highest sensitivity and specificity for detecting lesions of the renal parenchyma and the upper tract. Upper tract. Patients with contraindication with MR imaging as well as the setting of significant renal function compromise, renal parenchymal imaging with non-contrast CT or ultrasound is in conjunction with retrograde pyelography to evaluate the calyxes, renal pelvis, and ureter ureters may be most appropriate. For the urine biomarkers, these are the following urine biomarkers, which, which can be used. But cytologic examination may be considered in patients with a negative initial workup in whom ureteral carcinoma is still suspected, as well as in patients in symptom, with symptomatic microscopic hematuria. Current evidence indicates that none of the available urinary biomarkers, including cytology, appear to be sufficiently sensitive or sufficiently validated to replace cystoscopy or imaging. These studies are not recommended by most organizations in the initial evaluation of patients with asymptomatic microscopic hematuria. AUA has issued three guideline statements for follow-up of patients with initial negative workup. It recommends follow-up annual urinalysis for two years after a complete negative hematuria workup. And the patient from the care from care if the urinalysis confirm resolution of hematuria and repeating the hematuria evaluation within three to five years in cases of persistent or recurrent asymptomatic microscopic hematuria or for development of symptoms or gross hematuria. Microscopic hematuria has been reported to resolve in approximately one third of, the, of these patients over a period of three months to several years. Patients with re persistent or recurrent MA in the setting of an incomplete initial evaluation should have the evaluation completed or repeated. For the symptomatic microscopic hematuria, the AOA guidelines recommend cystoscopy in such patients regardless of age. 
cytologic examination is considered an option in the setting of irritative boiling symptoms, although cystoscopy sh should be omitted, even if the cytologic findings are negative. Moreover, although routine cytology is not recommended as part of routine evaluation for a symptomatic patient with microscopic hematuria, cytologic examination is considered an option in the setting of irritative boiling symptoms. For gross hematuria, as the degree of hematuria increases, so does the likelihood of finding clinically significant lesions during evaluation. Among patients, 50% have been found to have a demonstrable cause, and 20 to 25% have been found to have a urologic malign malignancy, most commonly bladder and kidney cancer. Patients presenting with gross hematuria in the absence of the antecedent trauma or culture document on UTI, such should be evaluated with urine cytologic examination, cystoscopy, upper tract imaging, preferably CT urogram. For hemorrhagic cystitis, it is an intractable hematuria localiz localizing to the bladder characterized by diffuse inflammation and bleeding from the bladder mucosa. BK, vir BK vir virus is a member of poliomavirus family and the most common virus associated with hemorrhagic cystitis. Adenovirus type 11 and 35 has been correlated with hemorrhagic cystitis in children and renal transplant patients. For viral induced hemorrhagic cystitis treatment is treatment is primarily supportive with hydration, diuresis, and bladder irrigation. Although case reports of success with antiviral therapy exist. It may also result from exposure to ex oxa oxaphosphorine class of chemotherapeutic agents specifically cyclophosphamide and ifosfamide. <clears throat> Bladder toxicity results from renal excretion of the metabolite acrolyne, which is produced by the liver and stimulates bladder mucosal sloughing and subsequent tissue edema and fibrosis. Indeed, hemorrhagic cystitis has been reported in to occur in 2 to 40 percent of patients treated with cyclophosphamide, and is dose-dependent. The onset of hematuria is typically within 48 hours of treatment. Tumor cap to etin sulfonate, which binds to acrylane, renders it, it inert and has been suggested for prof prophylaxis. Radiation therapy for pelvic malignancy represents another predisposing factor. Radiation damages the vascular endothelium, thereby inducing subsequent inflammation, fibrosis, and ischemia, with tissue necrosis and mucosa sloughing occurring through progressive obliterative endarteritis. Secondary infection frequently ensues, further compromising tissue healing. Importantly, receipt of both cyclophosphamide chemotherapy and pelvic radiation represents risk factors of for bladder cancer, and such patients presenting with hematuria who have a history of such treatment should be evaluated for bladder cancer before the diagnosis of hematuria hemorrhagic cystitis is assigned. For the differential diagnosis, um, in, for the infectious, it can be bacterial, viral, and for especially BK virus and adenovirus, fungal, and parasitic. For trauma, it can be external and post-surgical, 
transurethral resection of the bladder. Malignancy, it can be bladder primary, bladder invasion from local and distant primary. Bascul uh, vascular mal malformation, chemical exposure, radiation therapy history, and medication induced manifestation of systemic disease and Crohn disease. For the diagnosis of hemorrhagic cystitis, uh, we said identified risk factors and the hematuria evaluations, uh, UT imaging, <clears throat> urine cytology, and urine culture. For the initial management for patients with whom hematuria remains refractory, the aforementioned measures is particularly challenging and is often guided by the patient's clinical status. That is, for the clinically stable patients, particularly with hemorrhagic cystitis resu resulting from radiation therapy or cyclophosphamide treatment, represents an option for the next step in management. Again, for the initial management, we have hydration, diuresis, cytoscopy with blood evacuation, con continuous bladder irrigation, supportive care, um, address correctable factors, the, the infection, coagulopathy, tumor, and intravest vesical alum. If hematuria con continues after 48 hours, hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be used and um, bilateral neprostomy tubes for diversion of urine of, if hematuria continues uh, with bilateral nephroocclusive tubes. If hematuria continues without improvement of after each bot co completion, formalin 1% can be uh, given in these cases intravesical formalin a solution of formaldehyde that induces cellular protein precipitation and capillary occlusion may be used intravesical formalin therapy is associated with significant complications including bladder fibrosis with associated decreased bladder cap capacity and ureteral structuring with proximal hydronephrosis or renal injury. Thus, pretreatment pre cystogram is recommended to exclude the presence of vesicular ureteral ref reflux and bladder perforation and patients must be counseled before regarding the potential in impact on subsequent bladder function. If reflux is documented, placement of occlusive ureteral cat catheters is recommended to limit the upper tract exposure to the medication. Installation with volumes up to 300 ml or to, the, to, to bladder capacity should be done under gravity. When the catheter no more than 15 centimeters above the pubic synthesis, synthesis. Installation should be limited to 10 to 15 minutes and should be performed with the catheter on light traction to prevent ureteral exposure. With care taken to protect all the external areas of skin from exposure. Given the potential toxicities of formalin together with the requirement for administration under anesthesia, this agent should be reserved for second-line therapy. In the setting of failed angioembolization and other conservative approaches, cystectomy with urinary diversion may be necessary to control bleeding. For hematuria that persists despite such con conservative co measures, alum 
maybe dissolved in sterile water and then used to irrigate the bladder at a rate of 200 to 300 ml. Continuous bladder irrigation with 200 mg aminocaproic acid per liter of 0.9% normal saline has been described with irrigation continued for 24 hours after hematuria result. Through this action, as an astringent at sites of bleeding, aloe may cause protein precipitation on the urethral lining and the restriction and decrease in capillary permeability. This agent may be considered for the first line intravesical therapy among patients with hemorrhagic cystitis, failing initial supportive measures, particularly among these those without renal insufficiency. For the prostate-related rela breast hematuria, um, exclude uh, other causes of hematuria with UT imaging, urine cytology, and cystoscopy. The initial management can be hydration, diuresis, <clears throat> continuous bladder irrigation, supportive care, and address the correctable factors such as co coagulopathy. As with hemorrhagic cystitis, hematuria from prostatic origin is a diagnosis made after a complete gross hematuria evaluation. Most commonly, Prostate-related bleeding is due to B BPH, prostate-related infection, or prostate cancer. BPH rep represents the most common cause of prostate-related bleeding and has been cited as the most common cause of gross hematuria in men older than 60. The cause of benign prostatic hem 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 related hematuria may has been thought to be increased prostatic vascularity resulting from the higher microvessel density and hyperplastic prostate tissue. This noted increase in microvessel density has in turn been linked to higher levels of vascular endothelial growth factor. So we can use the estrogens and anti- androgens in small case reports has, associate, has been associated with decreased prostate bleeding, presumably to the repression of an androgen-stimulated angiogenesis and the induction of programmed cell death within the prostate. Finasteride, a 5-alpha-reductase inhibitor, blocks conversion of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and is the treatment for prostate-related outlet obstructive symptoms. It has been investigated extensively for BPH-related bleeding. Treatment with finasteride is associated with decreased vascular endothelial growth factor expression and prostate microvessels density and a, a decreased prostatic blood flow. Patients with persistent bleeding from BPH despite conservative therapies and endoscopic fulguration have traditionally been managed with transurethral resection of the prostate, particularly when additional indications for BPH surgery coexist. For the urethral bleeding, this defined as bleeding emanating from the urethra at a point distal to the bladder neck according separate occurring separate from maturation your retrograde retrogram and cystoretroscopy 
are the mainstays for diagnosis in patients with suspected urethral bleeding. In men, trauma to the urethral epithelium represents the most common cause of urethral bleeding. Direct visual visualization permits identification of pathological processes in the urethra and biopsy and fulguration allow for histological characterization and cessation of bleeding. For the differential diagnosis for nails, trauma is the most common and occurring in patients with penile fracture. In this setting, prompt evaluation by a retrograde urethroscopy or cystoscopy should be undertaken to evaluate for urethral injury and to identify the nature of location of the injury before surgical exploration. For the females, trauma can be blunt, pelvic fracture, and or penetrating, such as foreign body. Urethral diverticulum, urethral heruncle, urethritis, malignancy, and calculus pussy. Hematuria originating from the upper urinary tract manifests as total hematuria or bleeding throughout the duration of the urinary stream and may be characterized by worm like clots passed via the urethra. Medical renal disease are urinary findings suggestive of glomerular cause include the presence of RBC casts in the urinary sediment, dysmorphic RBCs, and proteinuria. Tubular interstitial diseases broadly referred to kidney diseases affecting structures in the kidney outside the glomerulus. So percutaneous renal biopsy may be valuable diagnostic modality in case of suspicion of glomerular and tubular interstitial causes of hematuria. Vascular conditions affecting the, up, the urinary tract. Uh, the pre predisposing factors include pelvic or vascular surgery, pelvic irradiation, extensive urethral, urethral mobilization, and chronic urethral stenting. Angiographic local, localization with vascular stenting has become the current preferred management approach. Renal arteriovas venous malformations are abnormal communications between intrarenal arterial and venous systems with congenital and acquired causes. Acquired AVMs account for 75% such as of such cases and have been associated with renal biopsy, renal surgery, and trauma. Arteriography with selective angioembolization is considered the primary diagnostic and therapeutic option for suspected renal AVMs. Expeditious and angiography are considered for patients with renal, recent history of renal procedure presenting with gross hematuria. The Nutcracker syndrome. Uh, renal vein entrapment syndrome may, def may be defined as the compression of, of the ren left renal vein between the abdominal aorta posteriorly and superior mesenteric artery anteriorly. The management can be, will be left renal vein transposition, superior mes mesenteric artery transposition, and nephrectomy have been described as surgical approaches. Hematuria has been postulated to occur as a result of increase in left renal vein pressure causing small volume rupture of thin walled capillaries into the collecting system. For the lateralizing essential hematuria, 
is a benign essential hematuria or chronic unilateral essential hematuria. It's defined as a macroscopic hematuria cystoscopically localized to one side of the urinary system without a clear identifiable cause. Cystoscopy at that time could bleeding may allow lateralization and source of hematuria. Thank you, no? That's it. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for that very informative um, lecture. Uh, do you have any questions? Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Didn't lecture again. Yes, sir. Yan lang po yung lecture next um next week. Next week lang po yung sus. Ay next Friday po. Okay. May questions kayo, guys. Ernest. Ah. Uh, na. Thank you, Doctor, for that report. Very extensive, naman. Um. So I'll see you. Anong report? Anong topic sa Friday? Sir, cutaneous, cutaneous diseases of external genitalia, sir. Okay. Ah, baba. Ano ay? Ah, nasa less than eighty slides naman po sila, sir. Dalawa po sila okay. mga. Thank you, everyone. See you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Attendance para. Attendance. Ernest, attend that. Okay, see you. Wait long. Wait long. Wait long. No, no, no. Okay, okay. One, two, eight. No, you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir.